Sure, I'm sure. So here it is. It is the final rock of the first end. Pretty sticky situation. A wide draw to the edge of the forefoot to give up one. Looks like it's cruising. Yeah, Ashton's backing off this one a little bit. Might catch something new out there. I doubt practice rocks have, have really made it out there. That is digging a little bit. Will it stop in time? Will be a steal two at least? Settles into the back of the eight foot. It will be a steal of two. Could have been worse, but still very strong start. The team pushes out. Oh. And here we go. Your commentator has betrayed you. I counted rocks wrong. There must have been one in the corner. It looks like Fujisawa has hammer. I had total faith in you, Rory. <laughs> first, first game, first end. I mean, I want to give myself a carte blanche here, but <laughs> whatever. It was fun. I, I, building that drama was so much fun anyway. I mean, still, looks like we got a shot for three or four. Yeah. Team Fujisawa, it looks like uh, Skirlik has, has uh, sort of shown her the way a little bit. Yeah. You know, you'd want to just draw there, you know, get air on the side of maybe being heavy, try and tap that back for four. If you don't got to tap it far, maybe three or four inches. Yeah, we'll kind of leave it to the sweepers, eh? Most likely, especially this early in the game, you have an open draw for three. You want to make sure you get that. Um, the four is a bonus, and it looks like they're, uh, they have the three for sure, and they're going hard for the four now. Line looks good. Can they drag it back to tap? This one's digging as well. Like you said, that's the okay way to miss. It's going to be three points on the board for Team Fujisawa. Strong opening here at the Western Showdown in Swift Current. Brought to you by Nutrient Egg Solutions. Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterlands. Choose your new Neon Mix Doubles partner or make a statement with a Neon Curling Rock in your window. Also actual Letterlands. Use discount code WOW for 15% off. Only at Letterlands.com. We ask Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed? More innovation? It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Swift Current is great because everybody that we do business with, we know on some sort of personal level. What I love about Swift Current is the vibrant arts and culture community. I really like Swift Current. We are not a big city, but the size of the city is really good and we have everything. Swift Current is a great sports town, great teams and great fans. People say, you know, good morning, hi, how are you, even though we don't know each other. So with the impact of my business and income, will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. Welcome on back to Swift Current. It is the second end. Team Fujisawa did score three. 
And the audience missed most of the end, as I understand. Pretty busy getting things up and running here in Swift Current. As, as many of you know, Curling Stadium Live. Free curling directly to you on YouTube. So there are some kind of uh, hiccups as tournaments get started. That was one of them. Apologies, but I don't mean to rub it in, but you missed a pretty good end. We had uh, <laughs> we had quite a bit of, of rocks in play, multiple center guards, some makes, some misses, some oohs and ahs, but I'm sure we're going to do it all again here. In the second end, my name is Rory McCusker. I'm your operator, camera guy, and uh, commentator, I guess you've, you've caught on to as you're hearing my voice. I am joined today. Josh Usick. Hello. Josh. Hello, curlingzone.com. Hello, Rory. So glad, glad to be here. Well, that first end was, was pretty exciting. Uh, Team Japan, or Team Fujisawa of Japan, gained some early advantage, but I, I don't know if they missed a shot after that as they really sealed away the house. Had multiple rocks down the center line, and in a desperation draw on her last, Kayla Skirla came up a little bit heavy, allowed uh, Satsuki Fujisawa to draw for three. It may have even been a score of four draw. Yeah, Skirla got a little bit in too deep pretty early in that end, and a couple misses trying to clear things up. Uh, desperation draw on her last. It just came up a bit heavy. Left a shot for four, um, just barely too light on uh, Fujisawa's last to uh, bump it back for four, but either way, Skirlik's getting to work here, looking to uh, get herself back in the running for this game. Yeah, I love these kinds of ends. Four made shots to start things off. So we've got our center guard, corner guard, and I'm not sure if they came up light on their draw on the next center guard, or if they're trying to throw double centers. I, I'm guessing they came up light. That's what you'd think, yeah. But either way, both teams kind of putting their rocks in, in the spots that they'd like to. So now you got three rocks down the center line. Now the, the depth, not ideal for Team Fujisawa. But two really good stones. Uh, that biter ended up in a really good spot for Team Skirlik. So that's, that's in the rings and undercover. So free guard zone is now expired. Team Skirlik can hit if they want to. Looks like they're going to. But the key with any end where you're trying to score multiple points with Hammer to keep your shooter in the ring. So removing the red stone, not so much the priority here. Keeping your yellow stone around. That's the that's the key. Yeah, exactly. If I'm in the clear here, I think we're gonna beat the teams quickly. Absolutely. Uh, we got uh, the Fujisawa ring curling out of the Kokoro curling club in Hokkaido, Japan. Uh, their lead is Yurika Yoshida. Their second is Yumi Suzuki, third Shinami Yoshida, and their skip is, of course, the famous Satsuki Fujisawa. They are ranked 10th in the world currently and number one in Japan. On the other side, throwing the yellow rocks wearing the red uniforms, it's Kayla Skerlick curling out of the Garrison Curling Club in Calgary, Alberta. Their lead is Ashton Skerlick. Their second is Jerry Lynn Ramsey. Their normal third, who is not in attendance currently, is Brittany Tran. And their skip is Kayla Skirlik. They are currently ranked number 28 in the world, number 12 in Canada, and number three in the province of Alberta. Very good. That's, that's some good info. Thank you very much. A lot of research. I was up late studying. <laughs> hey. Like you're back in school. Did my homework for sure. That's that's you got that. Now we, we missed a kind of interesting shot there. Uh, Team Fujisawa accidentally splitting off their their tight guard. We got pretty lucky. After this delivery, we'll have another look at it. In fact, I'll show you right now. I'm talking about it. That red rock, I think, has has shot over that that second yellow. Yeah, that's really a kicker for uh, for Kayla here. Not really going to be able to remove that one. This is Jerilyn Ramsey drawing. Originally born in Summerside, Prince Edward Island. Now resides in the great city of Calgary. And a little kiss off the corner yellow guard there. 
and puts it pretty much where they wanted to anyway. Yeah, that's... You're not going to be mad at that one. A couple a couple kisses and rolls into good spots here. Yeah, a couple wicky ticky uh, lucky shots here because a bonus to that one is I'm pretty sure it exposed the red stone behind that corner guard. You might be able to remove that if you wanted to now. Yeah, I believe this red is available to hit with light weight or at least the Fujisawa rink thinks it is. Not sure you'll get the chance, though. I mean, there's probably going to be other priorities in the rings. I, just a, a little note there. This has got a long way to curl. Really? It does. Get the chip. But deposits it behind the corner guard mess. Not wow. a great result. That Fujisawa guard quite high in the free guard zone, and with all this curl on the ice, you got to think it's it's not going to protect the stone very well. That Team Skirlik's going to have a crack at removing whatever gets put behind there. Yeah, yeah. and Kayla's starting to pile stuff up in the back of the rings. They're sitting two right now. It's close for third. I think we both agree it's red, though. Yeah, you know it's. It, some might consider peeling that red guard at this point. You're set up pretty well. You've got first and second shot. You've got play coming towards the wing, which is what you want. You know, in, in a tie game scenario, I, I could understand, or especially if you're leading, I could understand peeling. But no, uh, Kayla smells blood in the water. She wants to use all the tools available to her. So she's going to she's gonna try to put one in the rings behind that red stone. Coming up light here, not a great option, though. Take a closer look at that rock where it ended up for sure. And gonna be there for third shot. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Not super available for removal, but I mean, if Team Fujisawa wanted to draw the four foot or hit and roll behind uh, that, that, that yellow stone might end up acting as more of an obstacle than, than anything else. Very interesting setup we got going here. I love when ice is curling this much. You're never really safe with any particular um you know guarded setup or or anything like that always got to keep attacking always got to keep working the, the rings definitely so fujitawa up three they're going to hit the open stone cannot fall for that but they're not going to get the roll so it's going to leave a trade back between skirlik skirlik's going to get the opportunity to roll this rock where they desire i would guess they might want to put it behind the corner guard as well Although, there will always be a chance to freeze on those back stones. That's very true. I didn't see for sure where Ky Kayla uh, notion for this one to roll to. Mm -hmm. Might be satisfied with just taking it on the nose. This is Geraldine Ramsey with her final rock of the second inning. This one's really moving. And that was about as much of a roll as you could get and still stick around for third shot. Absolutely. Team Scarlet answering back after uh, really a dominating first end from Team Fujitsawa. Exactly what they needed, but two shots left for Satsuki to try and make something happen here. No, no clearly hittable stone. And oh wow, they are going to try and take advantage of these kind of overlapped center line stones. They're going to try to hide in the forefoot. Yeah, this is where that third rock shot can come to bite Kayla a little bit. It's just acting as another guard really for Satsuki, and especially when that red guard is so high and would normally be so easy to get around and hit. Yeah. It's uh, really starting to be more of their downfall than anything. Just checking up on the chat here. Love it when, when our audience kind of chimes in on the YouTube chat. Wendy McKay, is Kayla curling with just three? Uh, yes, she is. It appears that uh, her normal third is not, not here right now. It could be something where she joins later in the tournament. And of course, all of our hellos and good mornings from the great country of Japan. Love our Japanese fans. Love it when they join us. Love to see that. We've got 535 watching right now. Uncharacteristic mix miss there by uh, Fujisawa coming up 
quite light there. And uh, this is really a chance for Kayla to take a stranglehold on this. I think we're going to have a wild game here, folks. That's just my that's just my feeling right now. First yeah. draw, new ice. Looks like freshly, freshly treated rocks as well. That's just my guess, but... Been a bit of a shootout so far in the first two ends, that's for sure. JR, shouting out your commentator, Rory. Thanks, JR. <laughs> Son of the great Joan McCusker. You know, she commentates on Sportsnet, but I get to commentate on YouTube. I think I win that trade. Not living in her shadows, that's for sure. <laughs> Step aside, Joan. The future is now. Curling zone. <laughs> That's where the greats call games. <laughs> Kayla Skirlitz first for the second end. Yeah, and I mean, when you give up a three in the first end like that, you skate back the other end and go, geez, like, you, you want to fight that feeling of, of I got to get it all back right now. But it's so incredible uh, when you actually do get that chance, you do get your first three or four stones in a really good position and then and then yeah now Kayla's got an opportunity she's got the, the power in her hand and it's looking pretty close here yep. Ashton's gonna take it as far as she can get it right in the middle of the eight flying four with hammer all of them buried pretty Fuji good luck. looks pretty content to try and freeze onto that shot rock yeah, I mean, it, you can make it, you can make, you can put it in a right, hey, let me try that again. You can put that in a good spot where I don't think there's a raise run back or anything to get rid of it. So you would pretty successfully force Kayla to a shot for only two. If you're able to curl that in there and, and put that on the face of the yellow. Anywhere else, you'd risk Kayla being able to attack it and getting her four or maybe even five. Yeah, holding this Alberta rink to a deuce here is definitely a victory for the uh, the Fujisawa rink at this point in the end. We'll see what she has. This Fujisawa team has had the exact same lineup since 2015-2016. And uh, it definitely shows with the chemistry they have, the bond they have. Very famously, one of the most lighthearted teams you'll see on tour. Always laughing, smiling. You know, they're one of the teams you love to watch because they have fun. An infectious charm. I think That's uh, for sure. Canada got to know them in Swift Current at the Women's Worlds. I'm trying to remember what year that was. Could have been 2016 or 17. That was 2016. Yeah. So, so they had. That was that was when kind of Canadian television audience met Team Fujisawa. And they were so charming on the ice, and they're so likable in that final versus Chelsea Carey. I swear, half the arena was secretly cheering at Chelsea Carey. <laughs> Even though we had our own Chelsea Carey in that final. Yeah, they famously have a lot of uh, a couple uh, big silver medals. The silver medal, of course, at the 2016 World Championships, as well as a silver medal at the 2022 Olympics. Still trying to break through and grab that uh, big championship gold. Massive shot here. Looks pretty good. Sweeper's leaving it as it comes in. They get a corner freeze, but man, that rolls off just a slight bit. I think Kayla's going to take on the shot for five here. Just chapped off. Just one foot heavy, I would say. If that stops anywhere sooner, I, I think it does the trick. But even if you lose that rock in the four foot, I, I think it's still worth it. As long as you get that redstone out of there, you're going to count all your orbiters. This looks like a shot for three, perhaps four, maybe even if you get it just right, five. Yeah, definitely a tough one, but we've seen the ice moving. They're going to believe in it. Again, we say one sweeper. So here it is, last rock, second end, trying to remedy a three-point deficit. Kayla like massive opportunity. Got to curl a little bit. Oh, it's boy. One makes contact, but uh, not enough of the stone. They thought it would curl more. She may have tossed that out. They may have misread the ice, whatever the case. 
does not accomplish what they're set out to do. They give up a steal, a huge swing here in the second. It is Team Fujisawa leading four to nothing after two ends here in Swift Current. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Well... What do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? Try this. Makes your eyes pop. This could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Iced tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Welcome back. Gerlich Fujisawa. Wildly entertaining first few ends. There's a big score of three from Fujisawa. Well earned score of three in the first end. And then roaring back, Team Skirlick really had something cooking. They tolerated a center guard, though. And that's the cardinal sin. Whenever you tolerate a center guard, you can expect that your opponent's going to have some kind of shot to finish things off. And that is exactly what happened. Uh, Satsuki Fujisawa used the center guard. Well, I guess it was a double center at that point. Ended up, ended up light. Team Skirlik had a chance to control the forefoot. They did. Kayla Fewer first rock, top eight-ish. And on an attempted freeze, Fujisawa makes it just good enough to create some backing. Kayla's last stone was unable to remove that rock. And here we are. It's a four nothing lead. But uh, not a totally dominating performance from Fujisawa. There was a lot of opportunity in that second end there, Jason. No, I think it was definitely just, you know, two opposite ends. The first one, you know, really controlled by Fujisawa, a couple of misses from the uh, Skirlik ring. And then on the opposite side, it just felt like Kayla's team just kept lining stuff up in the back of the rings around the wet, uh, the ring, sorry. Um, came to the center and they you know, had a tough shot for a big score, possibly to tie it or even take the lead with a really nice shot. And it ended up really just being one that uh, Kayla's definitely going to want back. Just maybe was a touch wide, pitched it out a bit maybe, and uh, dead jam on the uh, shot rock, giving up a steal on a rock where they started out uh, sitting one when she let go. And apologies, slip of the tongue there. I'm joined by Josh Yusick. Josh has done his homework. I have not. So I'm a man of many names. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Team Fujisawa, as we said, sits number 10 in the world currently. They uh, took a victory earlier in the season at the Advix Cup in their home of Hokkaido, Japan. That was a big one. As they'll drop this one just back to you. Three rocks in the rings. I guess it's mission accomplished. Like, 
suppose you wouldn't want your, your two stones behind the T-line there, but as long as you're not throwing guards, I think the skip is moderately happy. You have some room to tolerate when you're up four after two in a WCT event, I think. Yeah. But this is Ashton Skirlick, sister of the skipper, Kayla Skirlick, throwing her last rock. This one needs to curl up a bit. Move some stones is the ask. Stones are moved is the result. Doesn't quite get the roll. That will be available for a hit, but Fuji is going to take the more dangerous stone. She's going to work her way top to bottom, healing the top corner guard. Yeah, maybe a bit of a half shot by Ashton there. You know, definitely wanted to curl a little more, maybe roll under the guards, but especially to, you know, possibly push two rocks at least behind the T line. You know, the first mission wasn't really to kill a rock there maybe it would probably would have been better for them to just push them back stuff to freeze on sure but yep. they're going to elect to draw behind the corner now this is jerry lynn ramsey normally playing second for this team out of calgary but in the absence of Brittany tran has taken on throwing rocks four five and six And playing with three players, something the Fujisawa team has famously done, did at the uh, COVID bubble Grand Slam uh, a couple years ago now, very famously, and to moderate success in that as well. I believe that was when they won their Grand Slam. They, have, they had one Grand Slam title in their career. It was at the Canadian Open at some point. I don't actually have the year written down. Hmm. They also played with three when I worked at Grand Slam in Toronto Players Championship, and and yeah, they were going they were going crazy with that one. I think they made a semifinal, lost the semifinal in that one. Yeah, not too many teams do it as good as Fujisawa. You might be able to argue Brad Gushu. Sure. Yeah, in the women's game, it's it's tough to think of one. Oh. Just misses that rock in the house there. Very close, very close. And you know what? It's a difficult shot uh, on at a new rink. Let's assume they haven't had much practice ice on it on this new rink, and I'm guessing fairly fresh rocks. Those ones are always tough to call the sweep. So real close there. Gets the priority stone out of the way though. Yeah, that's one you can't fault too many people on the ice for. You gotta take it. Understand you were close. The rock rolls into the rings and. Uh primary thing is that you uh, learn from it. This is Gerilyn Ramsey with her second of the third end. Knock it back and stick right on the nose of that back red counter. Satsuki will be content to keep hitting. Absolutely. Pretty happy to have no guards in their way. This is Chinami Yoshida's first. I thought Chinami do the run back previously. I think that was her second. My mistake. Yeah. No, no problem. My mistake. You are correct. End is, is looking pretty... Similar no matter what. Still two Skirlick Stones in the rings with another one to come. So, you know, the open deuce is still very possible. Perhaps even more. There's a jam stone back there. That's correct. You'd like the guard or two to kind of multiply your chances of, of getting things sort of protected. But we're here now. A deuce is keeps the game alive. Yeah, for sure. I think a, lo a big thing this end is getting the confidence back, getting a couple points on the board. You don't want to let this one get out of hand more than it already has. 
This is Jalen Ramsey's final stone of the third end. A little down weight on that. Really caught the curl. And I can I can say from recent experience, having just played in Martinsville, beautiful curling club, James Gordon, fantastic job, and the Nutana Curling Club in Saskatoon. Another fantastic venue, host of the Saskatchewan Men's Tankard this year. When the rocks are freshly treated, and there's a ton of curl on the ice, the moment you go a half second softer on your hit than you thought, you're going to get sometimes a half half rock or even more of curl. So all it takes, you can hit the broom and you can have a good release, but if your weight is just a little bit down, you're going to over curl and make yourself feel silly. Yeah, that's the thing, especially this early in the event. Uh, your mistakes on weight are going to be amplified for sure. Not a lot of room for error in the first couple of draws. Yeah, that's a good way. Good way of putting it. Amplified. This is the skipper, Satsuki Fujisawa. Was born on the island of Hokkaido, now makes her home in Nagano, Japan. Closer to the Kurosawa High Performance Curling Center, is my guess. Ooh, this one's got a curl. Just barely Ooh. makes contact with the second one. That double was super available. Pretty big mixed opportunity there. Yeah, and Kayla's going to be happy just to know this. There's going to be three stones about as far as far as you can get up. Yep. Yep. And Not a very think... obvious double opportunity for, for Fuji on her next one. If, of course, uh, Kayla's able to make this sit and stick. I bet they'll take it on, though. Kayla seems to like her out turn here. Kayla Skirlick famously, you know, relevant in this game. Famously half Japanese. Ah. And I guess Ashton Skirlick would be as well. Sure, yeah. So maybe this game's hitting a little close to home. Maybe. That's very interesting, I actually. I didn't think of that, but yeah, it is relevant. And I wonder if our Japanese fans on YouTube uh, are aware of this, this fun fact. I'm sure they know who they're cheering for. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough to sway them, hey? <laughs> All right, rolls that a little close to the other stone. I don't know if that's so bad, though. That's pretty kind of thin double. I still no, Not a lot of nice doubles. No, I still think that Fuji will take it on. I did see that you could see the motion with their broom that they're happy with the hit and roll here. Definitely, you don't want to get too cute with anything. You can see Chinami lining up where she thinks the, the double is. So, you know, those two spots are a mere few inches away from each other, whether they make the double or whether they make the hit and roll. We'll call the sweep accordingly, you would think. Exactly. So this game, pretty crazy so far. We've got double digit potential. This is curling a lot. And a little roll, not gonna be enough to really create a, a jam opportunity. It's gonna be a hit and stick for three. The team Skirlix, though they do get the three that they were hoping for. Not in the most traditional of, of ways, but Hard fight through at the end. Both teams kind of uh, figuring out the, the ice and the rocks, getting a lot of swing at a certain stone. Experimenting with their weight, doing all the things that teams do in the first draw of a new tournament to try and get themselves set up for success. Yeah, definitely not your uh, run of the mill opening few ends to a brand new event. Yeah. Bit of a shootout so far here, but we might see things settle down as the. Uh, we should see see these teams uh, come a little closer together if Kayla can make this to three. Most definitely. The last stone. It's a hit for three. Looks pretty good. Wanted it to curl a little bit, but that's going to settle in. It's three points and a big three. Going to bring this game within one point, headed into the fourth end. It's going to be Team Fujisawa with a one-point lead with Hammer when we return. Thank you. 
I've been farming on my own right for 40 years now, I think. It's a very uh, wholesome enterprise. You have very, very busy periods when you have to go hard. So many of our windows are so tight that uh, you, you just can't afford to miss a couple days of seeding. When a producer places their trust in us, that when it's time for them to be able to make their living, we're gonna be there. That's a tremendous responsibility that it's not a one day a year thing, right? In order to actually deliver on that, you have to build your processes and you have to build your team and you have to have a, a mindset of operational excellence because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And it's our job to make sure that they don't go wrong. Or if they do go wrong, that we can fix it before it affects our customers. So with the impact of my business and income, will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Wetterlands. Choose your new neon mixed doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also actual Letterlands. Use discount code WO for 15% off. Only at Letterlands.com. Here we are, one of these days I'm gonna get my rocks preset before we cut back from commercial. But the hammer is correct, it is good to sell with hammer. One point up. Looks like we've got a center guard in play from Team Skirlick, a really good center guard, right? Tight to the house, directly on the center line. Can't tick that thing. And with the super swingy ice, the only way a center guard is going to be effective is if it is really close to the house like that. So, job well done. And Team Puchatella answers with a nicely placed rock in the top of the eight foot. Yeah, Kayla will be content to come right around that. Leaves it a little bit high, just about an inch past the 12 foot, maybe a couple inches. This is Ashton Skirlith. Kayla's taken a number of wins on the Alberta Curling Series so far this season. They won the uh, Curling Stadium ACS number three in Beaumont, Alberta. The Ladies Alberta Open in Okotoks. And they won the Curling Stadium Alberta Tour kickoff in Leduc, Alberta. They defeated Nancy Martin in the final of that one, who I believe is here this week. Rory, you probably know better than I do. Uh, I didn't see her name, but that, that nope. would make sense. I got it up right here. We'll, we'll take a peek. Defeating Nancy Martin, no easy task. No, a lot of experience on that team. And taking a bit of a younger uh, core to that team, of course, passed up on her uh, longtime partnership with uh, Sherry Anderson mm -hmm. to skip her own rank. Two years ago, I guess she did that now. Yeah, you yeah. know what, sometimes you, when you know, you know. You know that you want your own kind of thing. Two, two leaders sometimes. You, you just know it's not going to be compatible. I understand that decision. Although that was a powerful duo for many, many years in Saskatchewan. Well, and it was uh, Nancy Martin runner-up at the Saskatchewan Scotties last year, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Might have been. My memory is not so good with that kind of stuff. <laughs> Seems like I know about, more about the Japanese championships than I do about my home province here, but... Yeah. And you more know, news, I, yeah. more news about the Japanese. Well, my cat knows it's streaming season. Here's me talking, here's me pressing buttons he wants all over this keyboard. That's one of the hazards of the job, I would say. 
and speaking of the Provincial Scotties Championships, Kayla Skerlick will be looking to defend her Alberta Scotties Championship this year. Yep. As she won her first provincial title last year, ran the way to a 4-4 four and four showing at the 2023 Scotties Tournament of Hearts, missing playoff. With a fantastic final shot to win it, which you can watch on Curling Zone's YouTube page, we had the streaming rights for that Alberta Scotties, which means... We believe in power to the people. We put all of that stuff online for free. You don't have to uh, deal with copyright or television broadcast, this, that, or whatever the heck the other thing is. Kayla Skirlick shot to win Alberta Scotty. It'll be one of the top videos on our YouTube page. If you are watching this game, I suggest you take a 30-second break and go watch that shot. It was fantastic. As pressure as pressure could get. You know, I think talking about how good of a shot it was, I think it downplays uh, Ashton Skirlick's celebration a little bit. <laughs> that was one of the best throwing celebrations, I think, of all time. The, think, the two-handed broom throw and, like, flex blue. I think she tossed that broom into the Milky Way. That yeah. thing went flying. Yeah, her and Pat Simmons' best broom tosses in, in throwing history. For That's true. That's true. That was a good one. This is Jerilyn Ramsey getting in the hack now. Comment in the chats. Uh, Taichi, I believe Suzuki Fujisawa is still based at Kidami Hokkaido. Kitami Hokkaido. That might be true, but we are only as good as the information in front of us. So I, I always appreciate it when fans are, are chipping in information into the chat. You're going to learn a lot if you open that YouTube chat, people. I know working computers is very hard. But if you are watching on a PC, even on a smart TV, I think you can get the comment section up. Um, get that comment section up. And then if you're using a mouse or on your phone, you can right click on the screen or press the three dots on your phone. You can select translate to English, and that turns all of our lovely Japanese fans' characters into English readable comments. And I promise you, you will learn something if you do this. So just to just to repeat my special instructions there, right click in the chat, right where you see all the the words. Translate to English will be an option that comes up on your browser. Click that button and you will be enlightened by the views of our Japanese viewers which are up to at this point 711 people watching right now and i'm willing to bet four or five hundred of those are from the great country of japan so keep on chiming in people it helps me learn it helps the audience learn and it's one of the beautiful things about watching online versus uh watching on a television broadcast yeah i might have to update uh, satsuki's wikipedia page <laughs> My study might have failed me a bit there. I might have to watch what I say. We'll get Taiichi in here to fact check me every time I say a fun <laughs> fact, I guess. <laughs> All right, so no guards in play. A nice frozen stone at the top of the rings. Katsuki going to hit the open one. Solid throw. You always like to get those ones out of your under your belt. Yeah, especially mid game, you, you take what you learned from that and try to make the rest of them for the rest of the game. Yep. Carolyn Ramsey back in the half said her name a number of times today. Ashton Skirlick caught switching sides a bit there. That's the uh, downside of their one sweeper here. Threw it so well, it, it barely mattered. Lucky for her. Yeah, it was a little bit of a hesitation. Switch, switch back, then go back to the other side. <laughs> but shot was made well enough anyway.
Trading hits here. Team Skrillex will have to be careful if these ever work their way higher and higher in the house. There might be a double. But those those rocks are so so well frozen. I'll give you guys a nice overhead look here. This is Yoshida's last, and it looks like a nice hit and roll there. Into the yeah. forefoot. Wow. Really nice. And you know what? If she, if she puts that half a rock one way or the other, there's probably a run double. But now the way she's she's placed that, the, the middle red's going to stuff right into it. So no way to get rid of both of those red stones, I don't think, without uh, losing your shooter, losing everything, and giving up a blank opportunity, of course. So close they'll drag, though. So you can kind of send this red one wherever you want. I think the priority, though, is leaving two yellow stones um, not doubleable. Kayla's got an opportunity to force Fuji to score here. Just gotta wonder how how aggressive do you get with that versus uh, defending a chance for two. Just the in turn. I wonder where they decided to roll this one. Here's a skip to the Skrillex. With her first at the fourth end. Coming in with some weight for sure. Curling already. Gonna be a challenge to hang on to this one. Okay. Not an easy double, but they're that's a pretty good angle that they've created there. I don't think you can double those off without jamming. Yeah, it's lined up pretty good in Skrillex's favor, you'd think. And it doesn't look like the Fujisawa team's even going to suggest it. Mm -hmm. Might even try hitting the other one. Yeah, I, I, would you ever be able to throw an out turn and uh, and get just a little bit of a roll over to the wing? Make a, make a really hard double opportunity for, for Skrillex? Might give yourself a chance at two. Um, I'm not sure. I I think, I think Team Fujisawa is looking at the right options here. I think there's ways to roll inside a little bit and not leave a nice double on the reds. Sure, you get. They're also looking at line two right now, removing the outside stone, line two, and you know, kind of daring. Skirlick to either make a hit and roll or, or a double or else they are going to have a chance at two points. Which, being up one point in the fourth end, two would be really good right now. Two's always good. Had a bit of a costume change from Satsuki Fujisawa in between ends. <laughs> She's got the parka out. Well, you know what? If there was ever a year to make the trip from Japan to Canada, it was probably this year. It's pretty nice in Saskatchewan for December. Absolutely. But cold nonetheless is the Japanese skip. A lot of potential here. It looks pretty good. If you're going to get the hit, they're going to roll just a little too far, I would say. It leaves a pretty makeable. Um, you know, inside double. Yeah, you can nut that one for sure. Yeah, there's a traditional term to describe this double that I'm trying to find a different way to say. Right in the right in the center of these these two stones. As long as you hit <laughs> half, half a rock or less, you're gonna you're gonna make it happen. Trying to figure out that audio issue, why it's, it's cutting out every here and there, folks. Not so sure. Oop, didn't get my camera switched. Sorry, everybody. 
Okay, let's find a stone coming down the ice, trying to make a double. Calls Throws off action. Up. Nice shot from Kayla there. Really, really nice roll as well. I don't see a blank. She could try it. She could absolutely blast it a little bit on the, uh, the intern side. Maybe try to roll out. I don't think it's in the Fujisawa playbook. I think they're going to be content to take a two-point lead into, the, into recess here, if you will. These are pretty close together. I mean, you could, you could try. Just giving up the steal is so costly. I, I bet you're right. I don't think they'll even think about that. Double takeout, nonetheless. Final shot, Satsuki Fujisawa. I think Team Skirlik did their job. And now Satsuki's got to make good on this double attempt to avoid giving up a steal. One and two gets it done. So it'll be a two-point lead, our first single point scored of the game. The team with Hammer scoring every... Oh, no, no, there was, there was a steal in the second end. Forced to a single, that's the moral of the story here. It'll be Team Skirlik with Hammer down two in the fifth when we return. I've got the bill. Oh, well, now, I've got the tip. Standard tip increased 2% this year. <laughs> That's why I keep you around. So, corn's looking great. Well, our crop plan is working. Mm, and we locked in that input financing at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? Try this. Makes your eyes pop. <whistles> this could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Ice tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial, financing that's in the field with you. We are back. Big shout out to Nutrient, sponsor of this, title sponsor of this uh, Western showdown. Quite a few local and national and international companies Choosing curling as their sponsorship uh, subject. We appreciate you all. And uh, curlers are loyal folks. I can tell you growing up, every professional that my family interacted with was connected to curling in some way. Doctor, dentist, you know, people who came to work on the house, painter, roofer, you know, all of these people. This is all part of the curling community. So if you are a business and you're approached by a curling team for sponsorship, I would give it a good long think because... Like I said, it's all in the family kind of thing with this sport. So big shout out to Nutrien, throwing their hat in the ring for the Western Showdown here in Swift Current. We've had a fantastic opening draw. It's sometimes you see teams kind of just testing out the ice and testing out each other, playing simple shots, keeping clean ends. That is not what has been happening so far. We are... Uh, 
we have been treated to some, some rocks in play and some, some very interesting curling so far. Yeah, it was definitely mission accomplished from uh, Kayla Sterlick in the fourth end. Down four after two, I'm sorry. Not what you want to see on draw one of an event, but the three and the third was huge and uh, a tough shot for the fourth for Fujisawa. It's not a gimme. Anytime you make, need to make a double for one, so right back into it, a deuce gets them to tie. And uh, they're right back in it. Rory, I'd love to go uh, around the rings and check up on some scores in the other games if you're cool with that. Let's do it. All right. Over on sheet B, we have Michelle, sorry, sheet B, we have Michelle Jaggy from Bern, Switzerland. She's taking on Robin Silvernagel, Saskatchewan team out of North Battleford. And they are knotted up at two after five. They're a bit ahead of us. They've played five, and it's a 2-2 two -two tie. Jaggy just took one in the fifth to knot it up. Silvernagel with hammer in the fifth. On sheet C, it is the Kim team out of Korea, uh, leading Holly Duncan out of Woodstock, Ontario. That game is 2-1 at recess. It'll be Kim with the hammer up one in the fifth. On sheet D, it's Unji Gim, also out of Korea, taking on the Michelle Englot team out of Regina, Saskatchewan. And that one's getting a little ugly. 7-1, the Korean rink leads Michelle Englot at the fourth end break. And then finally on sheet five, it is the Italian rink, Constantini, knotted up at two with Amber Holland out of the small town of Crono, Saskatchewan, population about 300. It'll be Amber Holland holding the hammer in fifth. All those games, I believe, are available to be streamed on Curling Zone YouTube. Absolutely, they are. Toss this one out a little bit. We'll remove one guard. Not good enough, though. It's Fujisawa with control down the middle. So some fun facts about those games on the ice. Uh, the small town of Crono, just outside of Regina. Probably one of the closest rinks to Regina without being in Regina, Saskatchewan. Fantastic year-end bond spiel. We put a few teams in every year. That's a dress up and listen to music on the ice, bring your drink out on the ice kind of bond spiel. I look forward to it every year. Um, the Amber Holland rink, lots of experience there. That They have not qualified for provincials yet. I think that'll be a really strong last chance team. And another little point to make, Michelle Yagi, the Swiss team on the sheet next to us. Fun story about how they got started curling. Bern, Switzerland was host to the, I want to say it was the 93, maybe 94 World Championships that uh, my mother's team, Sandra Schmiller rink, was competing in. And Michelle Yagi's father was their team driver for the event. So young Michelle would have been just a uh, young schoolgirl, maybe even a toddler. Got to know curling for the first time through my mom's team and took a liking to it. Put some hard work in and, and now she's one of the top teams in, in Switzerland. So just funny how that all works out. Just takes a little bit of inspiration at a young age and curling can become your number one sport and there's a lot of opportunity in this sport so for all you parents out there i'm sure your your kids are in multiple sports if they, if they have a liking for curling don't get caught thinking that there's no there's no competitive future in curling there most certainly is I, i've always held that uh curling's one of the best sports especially for girls to play i think it's uh definitely one of the most progressive sports out there for women I mean, the numbers, the numbers back that up. Uh, the Scotties and the Women's World Championships get just as high number as the men's. And in fact, there are some years where the Scotties out, out, uh, is outwatched. Uh, what am I saying here? The, the, the Scotties gets more viewers than the Briar for certain, in certain metrics. So if you want to talk about equity in sports and, and uh, you know, even representation, I don't know if you can do better than curling, especially in a, in a winter team sport like this. Well, and I think uh, it says something that you got two men up here in the commentary booth and uh, 40 women out here, out on the ice uh, getting the job done, I guess. So, and so. and both, of us, both of us thrilled to be watching what we're watching. <laughs> Fantastic curling game. It's Brilliant. a great game, yeah. Yep, well said. The 
Ujisawa is going to slide a little bit deeper than they wanted here, I believe. Well, just a little note, it is almost uh, noon Tokyo time. So, good morning. Good, uh, good afternoon. All of our friends in Japan. It's good to catch everybody at a, at a normal time where everyone is, is awake. Although, I got to say, I've broadcast at 4 a.m. Tokyo time, and I've had hundreds of viewers on here, so... Some of the most loyal and passionate and tuned in curling fans in the world, if not the most country of Japan. The future looks bright. Very now, simple. all of you watching on YouTube, go to your local curling club and throw a few rocks. That's my that's my next push for the Japanese curling fans. <laughs> See if you can get some more clubs built out there. Make it instead of an Olympic sport, make it a make it just a sport everyone plays. Kayla looking to start hitting here, I believe, eh? Yeah, I mean, so you've got your kind of corner corner guards set up, but you, you have to, I mean, not beautiful corner guards, but you have to get rid of these middle rocks at some point. May as well start right now. The other way you can, you can think about things is, is play to the middle, maybe make a tap or a freeze, but that's kind of an, an ugly way to score multiple points. Yeah, I think they're probably seeing a little more red than they like to. And there's a, definitely an opportunity to get rid of a couple, maybe, maybe only one, but getting rid of one and rolling behind your corners there is uh, a good result nonetheless. This is Geraldine Ramsey. Ashton Skirlick on the scrub. Only going to get one. Yeah, I'm going to roll away from the corners as well. Not the result I think they were looking for there. And uh, the Fujisawa rank will look to uh, do a little bit better on that guard again as well, I believe, here. Yeah, I, I don't want to say I'm surprised, but it's definitely a decision to not hit that open yellow. That's true. That's very true. They have an advantage down the middle. There's only a few rocks left in, in the end. I, I can understand this call. Nothing that surprising about it, but it's just uh, it's a decision. Makes the guard, protects their rocks. Yeah, I think you can. Probably not seeing much of anything of either of those reds. I didn't see that top guard for about a half second. Just with how much it's curling, I thought they might, might attempt a outturn kind of hack waiter, see if they could juggle things around, leave two yellows in the rings. It's not desperation time yet. It is the fifth end. You want to make sure that you, you have a shot at a single point, keep the game alive. I think you're going to see Ramsey here looking for the double peel, I believe. Maybe if they're lucky, that red goes backwards and uh, hits some uh, some bad guys in the rings there. Like going to get top. one. Going to touch the other one and gets it out of the way, if anything, covering that <laughs> yellow. Kind of a weird way to make the double peel, but that's, I, I might consider that made. Kind of lucky positioning. Yeah, you don't hate that at all. At least Jalen Ramsey seems to be uh, happy with it. That was a solid high five she gave to Ashton. And uh, Fujisawa will be content to uh, look at the guard again, I believe, here. Or maybe not. What are you seeing up there, Roy? Yeah, I mean... You can't protect both of those. I don't think. That's true. There is a double if you if you leave the the kind of outside red exposed. There is there is a way to get rid of both of those and stick your shooter. So yeah, a little bit dangerous. Again, that's that's why I was a little surprised to see them guard. Although you, you would hate to leave those stones exposed for. Um, Skirlik to, to make a hit and roll to get some cover. Yeah, as per usual, another interesting end. Not a ton of ice. This has been sort of a straighter spot in the ice. We saw some hits not really snap. 
in this spot. It looks like the Japanese rink is looking for the curl here. Yeah, yeah. She may have got that a little outside. The, the room was only halfway into the eight foot, so. And that'll finish up nicely. I think that's a good spot. That's a pretty solid spot from Satsuki. Although, that double that I was talking about, Kayla walks right up. Step right up and make a double. I don't know if you can... The, the weight required to remove both. You just don't have to remove both. You really just have to push them kind of deep into the 12 foot. The key will be sticking your shooter around. That's true. A bit of an aggressive call here from Kayla, but... She's been chasing most of this game, and I think... If she sees an opportunity to get herself back even, she's going to take it. Yeah. And this is a good setup shot for her last... Probably see just about half of that target red from the half. So this is the Skirlick connection once again. Kayla on the release. Ashton on the sweep. Here's Kayla Skirlick's first out of the Garrison Curling Club in Calgary. Right off, right out of her hand. Line looks really good. Gets the one. Ooh, they need it a little thinner. They're going to push it out into the open, though. Yeah, that's... They're going to leave two of theirs buried in the rings. They're going to kind of force Fujisawa to keep attacking. If she leaves any of this rock open, there might be a double for three. Yeah, you're not going to hate that result if you're Kayla, but definitely wish she could have pushed that red a little bit more. I think you probably would have rather hit less of that target red. Yes. Sometimes we get caught thinking, oh, I have to just breeze by the guard. You know, the guard's in the way. I got to get as close to the guard as possible. I've definitely been guilty of that before. But that's not always the case, you know? Like, just, just because the guard is, is a pretty good guard and it's going to be in your way, you still want to make sure that you're hitting your target rock in the exact spot that you need to in order to make the, the action happen. That's so a good they, point. They, they may have got caught thinking, okay, we just got to play this port perfectly. I think it definitely caught me right there. Fujisawa coming straight to the forefoot here, correct, Roy? Yeah, you saw them top, uh, tapping top eight as well. I mean, they, they'd love to be second shot, but it, the ultimate sin here would be coming deep and leaving a double. That's very true. So it's Fuji's last rock here in the fifth end. Got to put her rock in a, a decent position to avoid a, a shot for three. Fully buried, biting top four. Would seem to be perfect. Need this to curl a ton. Coming. Looks like they're going to take oh. it back. Okay. Good plan B. I don't see a double. I mean, you got to run back, even at that. Not what they were intending, but they're they were able to manage the stone well enough. Good communication. No surprise there from Japanese uh, team Fujisawa. I mean, that was a team shot right there, and I think that's that's what you got to expect when you have a team like Fujisawa that's been around for seven years with the same lineup, you know? Great communication. You saw Satsuki following right behind the sweepers there. Communication going all four ways. And even though the shot wasn't made as intended, it leaves Kayla with only a shot for one here. I want to mention we're up to 883 viewers for draw one of this Western showdown. Just goes to show how important this tournament has become over the years. Absolutely premier on spiel. And a solid throw by Kayla to score one. Yep. Fujisawa did enough. Force her opponent to a single point. We have a one point game though. Much like the fourth end, it's going to be 
Team Fujisawa with one point lead and the hammer. Still anyone's game the way that these uh, these teams have been playing. We'll have that six then for you when we return. Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterland. Choose your new neon mixed doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also actual Letterland. Use discount code WO for 15% off. Only at letterlands.com. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed? More innovation? It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Swift Current is great because everybody that we do business with, we know on some sort of personal level. What I love about Swift Current is the vibrant arts and culture community. I really like Swift Current. We are not a big city, but the size of the city is really good and we have everything. Swift Current is a great sports town, great teams and great fans. People say, you know, good morning, hi, how are you, even though we don't know each other. to my business and income. Will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. Welcome back. We got a close game. A couple of singles leaves us with a 5 4 score line. Team Fujisawa with Hammer in the sixth end. Just to speak on those commercials, love the new set of commercials we got from our fantastic sponsors. Swift Current Saskatchewan can confirm. Fantastic city. Really lovely downtown. Lots of uh, healthy businesses. Went to the coolest farmer's market I think I've ever been to in Swift Current last year, last summer. A little warmer weather than the rest of the province. I mean, that's not saying much in Saskatchewan, but worth a visit. Swift Current in the entire southwest of the province. You can't Thank forget you. the Innovation Plex. Yeah, where we are Beautiful right now. Facility. Yeah, fantastic curling club and uh, some of the WHL Swift Current Broncos. Yeah, fantastic facility on the south side of town there. Good point. This is... Ashton Skirlick, all three members of the team are jumping up to sweep this one. <laughs> but they're not actually sweeping. No one's actually got a brush down except for uh, the skipper. Yeah. That's a rarity there. But the shot seems to be made either way. Josh Usick here on the commentary with me. We're having a lot of fun here. Wednesday night. Really entertaining game. Lots of rocks in play, and it looks like we're going to have another end of the same. This is the Japanese lead. It's Yurika Yoshida. Some more rock watching. Ice breaking down nicely. The sheet's been worked uh, kind of front to back pretty well. No particular draw path overused. So whole sheet looking like it's it's going to be pretty consistent time-wise. But, you know, Eureka's had, had a little bit of trouble getting her weight down. That's that's not the first time she's, she's sent a draw either light or into the back of the rings. That time going completely through. And this is Ashton Skirlick's third of the end. The youngest player in this game. She's currently 24 years old. 
the younger sister to Kayla. Rory, you ever see it the other way, where the younger sibling is the skip, and the older one's playing? That is, a, that's a super stat right there because no, I have not. No, you haven't. I have not. It's definitely uh, a rarity. Oh no, uh, Dallin and Kirk Myers. Kirk is younger, isn't he? Yeah, but I mean, I. Dallin did end up skipping his own team eventually, but I, I think that's the only example that I can think of at the top of my head where uh, Younger took the back end role. The second team Saskatchewan up the Canadian Juniors this past year. Shout out to Matthew and Adam Drew. Oh, yes. Matthew, a couple years younger than his older brother, Adam. Adam, who was throwing thirds. Matthew, who was calling the game and throwing fourths. Mm. I think those might be the only two I can think of for sure. Oh, nice feel beautiful. there. Four rocks leave the rings. Three rocks leave the rings and the shooter. That is top notch. Courtesy of Yumi Suzuki. Top notch shot. She can she can chuck some bombs. You're Girl. seeing it more and more in the women's game now. Yeah. Yeah, there's some kind of technique uh, revolution in, in some kind of way. It used to be there used to, there was only one, maybe two players a team, sometimes zero, that could throw that kind of weight. Mm -hmm. And now even, uh, you know, short, short Japanese ladies can chuck their seven-second hits. Well, it was just a virtue of, like, the strategy that was built into the women's side of the game as well, that it was just a lot more delicate of a game played on the women's side. But I think they're more... A lot more open to uh, hucking them down there, getting a lot of rocks moving now. That's a good point. Yeah, the, the men's and women's game probably closer together now than it's ever been. Yeah. You know, you've got uh, uh, both like many sexes uh, coaching each each teams. Like I've seen, I've seen female coaches coaching men's teams. A lot of men in the women's game. At this point, a lot of retired men's curlers. That's very true. Coaching the women's team, so you know that's eventually going to trickle through. Fellas, there's no shame in having a, a woman coach your team. Absolutely not. <laughs> you can believe him because his mother. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very famous curler. Not always the best idea to have your mom coach your team, though. Just. Multiple, multiple reasons for that. Here's Gerilyn Ramsey. Coach deliver her second of the sixth end. Uh, nice point from uh, Tai Chi. Very engaged fan. He's telling us that the DuPont sisters from Denmark, younger one plays, yeah, Madeline DuPont. Hmm. Good point. I'm sure there's a few examples, but uh, especially here in Sask, very family, family game. Ooh, I interrupt my story to bring you a hogged rock, significantly hogged rock. That is not the solution because now the house is wide open. Yep, Fuji and this is attack time for Fujisawa here. Yeah, she, she could pursue a blank if she wanted, but with that corner guard still available, I mean, yeah, why not? You do not mind scoring in the sixth at all. Of course, of course. If you, if you want to understand the uh, the significance of scoring in the sixth, curlingzone.com has a free analytics kind of matrix for any aspiring skip someone wanting to learn more about curling. You go to curlingzone.com, and in the, that top bar, top menu bar, you select analytics. Select the season that you want to see. Select the men, women's, or doubles game. And you are going to have yourself free information. Take a page out of my book. Do your homework. <laughs> oh, I live on that page. <laughs> so in 2021-22 20, season, actually, let's go the most recent. 2023 season for women's. 
The difference is if you score in the sixth end, so with two ends remaining, the difference in winning the game can be as high as thirty percent. You go from a fifty-two percent chance of winning the game if it's tied with Hammer to an eighty-four percent chance of winning the game if you're one point up after six. Yeah, and it's not something you open the game with, you know, terribly worrying about, you know, got to blank the first, got to score in the second. But as you get into the fifth and sixth, I think that's where teams start to think about what end am I scoring in and when am I going to have hammer? And especially if you're down, you want to try and manipulate the game so that you could try to end up with hammer in the last end. But, yeah, it's looking like the opposite for the Scarlet rank here. Now, with the no-tick rule, we've seen a, a really dramatic increase of teams without hammer being able to figure things out in that last end. So, looking at only a 66.7% chance of winning the game. Oh, I, I also misquoted the, the stat there. That was with hammer. If you were up one with hammer, you have a 84.1% chance. So, if, if Fuji was to blank this end, she would have an 84.1% chance of winning the game by the numbers. Whereas if she scores a single point, that goes up to 90. So a, a moderate increase, 84 to 90. Now, if she's up three points, so scoring two here, that shoots her up to 97.7%. Looks like there's only two cases where the team lost the game after being up three uh, with hammer. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the, the hammer stat again. It's 93% without hammer. I've already jumbled my words enough that, folks, if you're interested in what I'm talking about, you just go to curlingzone.com slash analytics, and you don't need my very confusing rundown. You can just you're look shooting it. a lot of numbers at me here. I'm starting to <laughs> – my head's spinning a bit here. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was predictable. I'm no skip, that's for sure. I don't worry about that stuff too much. <laughs> Kayla's going to try and chase this red behind the corner here. She can probably see almost all of it from the hacky thing. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to leave three in the rings, but even if you lose your back yellow, it's, it's not the end of the world. You, you've got a big chance for a force here, and I think that's that's big. I think Kayla's probably hoping to force Deuce and then go hard for the steal in the eighth there is probably your best, best case scenario for her. So I think just killing this red for sure is a huge step forward in that direction. Yeah, you don't see it as often, but you could try to blank the seventh end with five rock rule and with the no tick rule. It's if the lead makes their shots, a, a blank is a lot of work. So you, mm -hmm. you normally see teams just go for it, but that's always an option. Get the force here, blank the seventh. Give me decent hit weight. Yeah, you definitely don't want to underthrow this one and uh, risk taking that back yellow. Ashton will get on this one early. And the quick switch there. Removes the red. Oh. Leaves three yellow stones in the rings. Beautiful shot. We'll jumble around a bit. She'll tick both in the rings there, but... Yeah, I guess the only downside is she she moved her stone off the back four foot. So now there's a, a freeze a, a attempt that's going to leave Fuji as shot rock. That's true. Big that's arc. a pretty uh, nice outcome to kiss all every rock in the rings and still leave three yellows. Big parka and think thick pink gloves for Satsuki Fuji, Fujisawa. Yeah, they stand out. Okay. Still a good chance of scoring multiple here. Just has to make a nice freeze, and it's going to force Kayla into a more difficult shot. Yeah, there's no real risk here for Fujisawa. May as well try it. Front end's on the sweep early. Looks like it might be gliding a bit. Probably going to leave a 
Touch bump. Yeah, bump to the bits, and I think there is enough to see where you can remove that. Gotta be aware of the jam, though. I think the nose is pretty close to jamming, so... Gotta get inside enough that you're gonna avoid that back yellow. I think Kayla's got a fair bit of air for sure around that red corner guard. Maybe want it to curl a little bit more. For sure, yeah. Slightly overswept, I would say. They're looking at the jam possibility here. Definitely something to keep in mind. You don't want to gift Fujisawa a deuce here. You'd like to force him to want it, you'd like to make him work for it. But it looks like, if even if this is made by Kayla Skurlick, it's probably going to be a rather open shot for the single for Fujisawa. But a big shot in the sixth either way from the skip from the Garrison Curling Club. Yeah, she's made a few in a row. This looks like it's got to move quite a bit. Just going to sneak it behind that back yellow. That's it going. Sorry, bad camera work there, folks. Still still getting the groove of things. It's going to be three Skirlick rocks in the rings. Got the force they wanted. Yeah, and an open shot, but it's never, never a gimme when you're looking at a lot of opposing colored rocks. With that being said, Fujisawa was one of the more level-headed skips you'll see in the women's game today. Do you draw here, Rory, or you like the hit? I mean, it's it's whatever you're thinking. If I'm a sweeper, I, I want the draw. I want the power in my hands to to make sure that... I mean, all you need is the 8-foot. You also want to make sure your skip is feeling good about that draw for the 8th end. But, you know, when you're the skip in the hack... Or, sorry, the skip in the house, <laughs> you don't want to throw something just because you think you should. You, you want to throw what you you know in your heart you have the most the highest chance of making. So... Looks like she eventually went with the, the draw. I, I think you gotta you gotta have confidence in that. I think that's the call as well. I think especially sixth end, you gotta hit be able to hit the forefoot here. And I think uh, power's in her hands, I think she'll make it. So, using her sweepers, open draw, gotta bite the forefoot. For her single point in the sixth end. Got a little casual there. <laughs> Sweepers left it to the end, but they get it there. Full four foot. It's going to be a single point for Team Fujisawa. Another single. Two point lead heading into the seventh end. It'll be Team Skirlik with some work to do when we return. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? 
Try this. Makes your eyes pop. This could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Iced tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Welcome back, seventh end. Started out pretty wild, but things have sort of settled in here. Some singles in the last three ends. Big score of three to get things started for Team Fujisawa. Then in the second end, Team Skirlik looked like they had a, a big answer brewing. They had a shot for at least three, maybe four. If they make it perfect, I think it was five. But they end up under curling, giving up a steal. That was a four nothing lead. Next end, though, they got their three and kind of open fashion in the third. And then fourth, fifth, and sixth have been singles traded back and forth. So it's a two-point lead for Team Fujisawa here in the seventh. I'll take over for a short second here as we look around the rings. There's five games on the ice here at the IPlex and Swift Current. Tonight, all on the women's side of this Western Showdown event. On sheet two, it's the Swiss rink of Michelle Yegi. Leading Robin Silvernagel through six ends of North Battleford, Saskatchewan. It's 3 2 with a steal of one in the sixth for the Yankee Ring. And Silvernagel has the hammer in the seventh. Injun Kim has a 4 1 lead over Holly Duncan of Woodstock, Ontario. That is also through six ends. It was a steal of one in the sixth for the Kim Ring, which leaves Holly Duncan with hammer in the seventh down three. It was handshakes after six on sheet four. Uh, Unji Gim of South Korea took an 11 to two decision over Michelle Englot out of the Highland Curling Club in Regina. And on sheet five, it's Stefania Constantina, Constantini, excuse me, all knotted up at three with Amber Holland of the Chrono Curling Club in Chrono, Saskatchewan. It'll be Amber Holland with Hammer in the seventh over there. And all of those games, including our feature here between Scarlet and Fujisawa, are available to watch on curlingzone.com and youtube.com backslash curlingzone. Absolutely. Free curling. Year three of free curling. It has been a thrill. Team sponsors getting more recognition, events getting higher sponsorship and uh, and viewership. The curling sport as a whole getting more exposure, more worth it for teams to travel, more options for fans, new fans being created because things are available online. I cannot go on enough about how free curling has changed, changed the world of our sport. So thank you for tuning in with us, for commenting on YouTube, for sharing these streams with your friends and family. Don't keep it a secret. Tell everybody you know, hey, I'm watching free curling tonight on YouTube. Here's the link. That helps us more than anything. So thank you to all our supporters, our fans, sponsors, the whole shebang. Looks like Ashton Skurlick in the hack now for her third and final of the seventh end. Should mention she almost managed to hog her second uh, guard. But a big sweep gets that thing barely over the hog line. Very important when trying to score multiple points. Misses the double peel. We'll only get one moving. Her shooter rolls to the side. Yeah, and that's a shot that uh, Ashton's probably not too used to throwing, being a, a regular lead. But in the absence of Brittany Tran, she's obviously throwing the first second draw.
Yep. Yep. Good point. This is Yumi Suzuki. The second for the Fujisawa rink. And she'll just replace the guard nicely. Rory, if you're Kayla Skirlick, how badly do you need to score here? I mean, scoring one and giving up one are both probably similar outcomes. I guess you're a little better off scoring one. You really, really want two. You really, really want three. But you very much need to. Going into that last end without without the power in your hands, so to speak, especially if you're down a point already, you're just stealing to force another extra. Odds are getting pretty long at that point. So I'd say quite bad. One, two. Just barely not three. That's still a great shot. The double field made, but it does leave the yellow out in front. It's not covering the red per se, but it's definitely not in a great spot. It's definitely not a great corner guard out there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the price of going for it, right? You're, you're trying to get three rocks moving. You know you're going to leave your shooter there. But, um, yeah. Got to go for it at that point. Like you said, pretty high guard. All it's going to do is make this guard a little more easily makeable. There's more forgiveness on the center line side. But, uh, you know, you're one step closer to getting access to that rock in the forefoot. This is Yumi Suzuki once again. And that'll be a main shot from her. Pretty nice end for you as a second if all you gotta throw is two center guards. For sure. Never bad at that. A little bit of a stat padding end for Suzuki there. It's like about a 12 foot run back. 10 to 12 feet, super makeable, not easy. Jerry Lynn, Jerry Lynn Ramsey, usual second on this team. Obviously playing a little bit out of her position, throwing three rocks. Ashton Skirlick's on the sweep early. It's pretty close. It's one. Oh, Oof. inches. Maybe even one inch blew by. That's yeah. a super unfortunate miss. You're going to leave two center guards. Two failed run back attempts, both of them quite difficult, but that's the price you pay. And that's a big miss, leaving your shooter right out in front. You're clogging up the center a lot there. Yeah. And uh, the Fujisawa rank will be content to just keep piling stuff in front of that uh, shot rock. This is Chinami Yoshida. Throwing her first to the seventh end. Lion looks really nice on this one. It's going to be basically the same shot for Jerry Lynn Ramsey. But there's an extra rock in the forefoot now for her to get rid of. Skirlik on the sweep early again. Looks close. Bam, bam. Pretty good. That's a little nicer. Be a little happier with that one than her first. Running out of rocks here, though. Yeah, this is feeling a lot similar to the uh, to the opening end we had here tonight, where uh, our fans watching, all, what, 800 of them watching now, didn't get to see most of that end due to some technical issues, but... Felt like a lot of uh, Fujisawa jamming up in front of their shot rock. And uh, Skirlik, a couple misses and maybe just a little late trying to bail. Of course, Skirlik's a little, in a little different position here, really needing to score. Yeah, but the, the function of the end, I, I get what you're saying, pretty similar. 
Uh, this time, however, there's right now anyway only one obstacle to get rid of. They have a rock semi buried, so that's their second point, I guess. So as of right now, the way it stands right now, there is a run back for two. That's true. We'll see what uh, Fujisawa can do about that, though. And I guess the uh, the draw path, the intern draw path, a little bit cut off by the sort of reverse stagger of those guards. Maybe I don't even know if it's going to be. It's yeah, that. Possible. That top yellow guard is really high. It makes it really not a nice draw to look at. It's probably still there, but you have to throw a lot of rotation. Trust your sweepers to keep that straight. Bit of deliberation from the Japanese rank here. An update on sheet two is Robin Silvernagel taking a deuce in the seventh to lead 4-3. Yagi will have the hammer in the eighth, down one, as Satsuki Fujisawa delivers her first of the seventh end here on sheet one. And that's about right where she wanted to put that, I believe. Kayla Skirlick will take a look as she prepares for her first of the seventh hand. Couple long runbacks they're looking at here. And they're gonna look to move three stones with this rock. It's gonna be red onto yellow onto red in the forefoot. Mm -hmm. Hopefully to sit two and leave Fujisawa looking at a couple yellows as she throws her last here. Yeah, I was wondering if they might run back the other yellow, but I guess the advantage here is even if you miss, you clear up the middle. Yeah, I think you probably like a little more closer to nose is where you need to hit this, although she's not going to get it. And she's not going to touch the next yellow as well, so that's not a nice result. Yeah, and the downside with that shot is if you miss it that way, you're looking at a real tough one for your last, most likely. It's going to be tough to guard both runbacks, though. I think you might have to go straight into the rings if you're Team Fujisawa. Give yourself the I, best chance at keeping those reds around. I think I agree with you there. I think that's definitely the call. Here's Satsuki Fujisawa. Skip out of the Tokoro Curling Club in Hokkaido, Japan. With her last in the seventh end. Not an easy draw. That kind of reverse stagger we were talking about. Path is pretty tight. Oh, they're, uh, they are going to throw a guard. Nothing wrong with that. Worst case, you give up two. You give up a really nice shot to give up two. So... Take an easier, easier of the two shots. Cannot falter for that. And they're going to wait, take away the easier run back for Kayla Sterlick. Yeah, probably still there if you wanted it. I, I think it's whatever way you want, but you're right. That that kind of angle makes it more difficult for sure. Yeah. A little more path involved. And... Yeah. I think you have to take on some kind of run back. Scoring one's not going to do it here really have to take your shot at two yeah i think i think that's what i like as well there's options there to look at and i think you really need to take your uh, chances in a game where you haven't taken any steals against this japanese ring 
you know, stealing back-to-back -back ends is not going to be in the playbook as much as uh, a final end steal for the win here. So Gila Skirla is going to look at this long run back for the deuce. Yeah, I mean, it's, if you think you have even a, a 2 in 10 chance of making this shot, I think it's worth taking on. Rather than... I mean, that draw's not easy either. Like, how, how many times are you going to make that draw to the pin from the, the thin way? In fact, it probably overcurls. You might That's even so have to, to outturn tap your own with the, its own kind of hard shot. So, no, nope, got to take this on. I totally agree with this. Not that my opinion really matters, but here it is. Kayla Skirlick trying to stay in this game. Long run back for two. Last shot in the seventh end. Looks like it's got to move. Gonna be too thin. Gonna send it way over the top. It's another steal for Fujisawa. Not out of this game yet. Three points will tie it for Team Skirlick in the eighth end. The all exciting, encompassing final end of this battle when we return. I've been farming on my own right for 40 years now, I think. It's a very uh, wholesome enterprise. You have very, very busy periods when you have to go hard. So many of our windows are so tight that uh, you, you just can't afford to miss a couple days of seating. When a producer places their trust in us, that when it's time for them to be able to make their living, we're gonna be there. That's a tremendous responsibility that is not a one day a year thing, right? In order to actually deliver on that, you have to build your processes and you have to build your team and you have to have a, a mindset of operational excellence because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And it's our job to make sure that they don't go wrong. Or if they do go wrong, that we can fix it before it affects our customers. So with the impact of my business and income, will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterlands. Choose your new neon mixed doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also actual Letterlands. Use discount code WOW for 15% off. Only at Letterlands.com. It is the eighth end. It's Team Skirlick with Hammer. We had a steal in the seventh, a well-played end. Team Fujisawa didn't really miss a shot. Team Skirlick came so close to clearing out the red stone in the forefoot. Two run backs that did not miss by much. But in the end, it is Team Fujisawa that was able to hang on. Yeah, a bit of a... A long shot by uh, Kayla Skirlick on her last, a long run back in uh, desperation to try and get the deuce. I think we all agree that that was the right call. I think you really need to push for a deuce where she was, especially with the difficulty she would have faced with uh, taking a shot for one either way. Um, but just a missed shot, and it leaves uh, Fujisawa with a comfortable lead as we, end, as we enter the uh, final end of play. Quick update around the rings on sheet three. Uh, the Kim team out of South Korea took another steal over Holly Duncan. They lead at 5-1 in the final end, and it looks like Holly Duncan is playing the final end down four with the hammer. And uh, on sheet five, it was the uh, Saskatchewan rink, Amber Holland, taking a deuce against Stefania Constantini out of Italy, and they will lead that one 5-3 entering the eighth end the italian rink with hammer we will update you on the yagi and silver nagel games 
as the that eighth end is underway currently as well. We have got a yellow rock in the corner. We've got two yellow rocks in the corner. Yeah, a little bit of a disastrous start to an eighth end needing three for the Skirlick rink here. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a three score with two two corner guards in the corner. I, I've seen it with one. I've seen one guard missed and still able to make it happen, but that's uh that's more or less good nights. Not that I wanna not that I wanna call this game over, but you, you need guards in order to score points. So if, if Fujisawa is able to group her stones here, it's gonna be freezes and taps and some really difficult shots one after another in order for Team Skirlik to make this happen. If they needed two, I could maybe see it. Mm -hmm. Three is going to be a massive uphill battle. Sorry, bad camera work there, folks. I'm, I confused my preview screen with my program screen. We've got three rocks in the rings. It's going to take multiple contacts to tap those behind the T-line and get them in spots where, where Skirlik's going to need them. So, you know, some impressive shots here down the middle of the, the lineup, Team Skirlik. Yeah, and it'll you be a what? third attempt at this corner guard for Ashton. Yeah, yeah. Ashton playing with fire the last few ends was light, was using her sweepers quite a bit, just wasn't able to make that adjustment, I guess. Almost hogged a rock in seven and, and ends up hogging a few. And, and I know, I know the feeling. It's tough to change your kick when you're you're already set in a certain way. So she changes her kick for this one. A little too much. Game one, lots of weekend left. Lots of time to, to dial that in and get that feeling a little better. But I it's certainly not a good feeling when you miss your guards as a, as a lead rock thrower. Yeah, but not a lot of room for error in this women's event. It's. Uh... I believe it's uh, five groups of five on this women's side, or five groups of four, is it? Am I mistaken here? I'll take a peek here. Mm -hmm. Five groups of five here in the Nutrient Egg Solutions Western Showdown. Uh, a top two placement in your group will get you into the playoffs. So not a lot of room for error. Mm -hmm. And you know, one loss, you're already looking at uh, being on the edges. Especially with a uh, star-studded lineup as we have in Swift Current this week. Yeah, absolutely. Teams reaching from the Northwest Territories all the way out to Japan, Korea, Sweden, Switzerland, Italy. It's really a League of Nations going down in Swift Current this week. Basically a slam quality uh, field. It's tournament has, has gotten just so renowned. Yeah, this is one that'll get the town out to watch. Swift Current has been spoiled over the years with some super high quality curling. Another more or less open hit. At what point do you start uh, jumbling around those ro red rocks in the rings, Rory? Is this the one here? I would I would have started right away. <laughs> I, would have got I was it. about to say I'm surprised they threw another guard. I would have got something cooking. Meeting three, but waited waited for a miss and then thrown a guard. I think that's because because now you have them focused in the ring. You can rest assured that your guard's probably going to stay right there. But you know, I who am I? These are some of the best teams in the world. So it's fun for us to chat and and kind of work through things on our own, but I, you know what, whenever a team calls a shot that I wouldn't call myself, I, I always assume that they know what they're doing more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to defer. Yeah. We're just a couple guys having fun watching curling. Uh, hopefully just like everyone at home. Or on their lunch break in Japan wherever you may be watching from. Another rock above the rings there. 
for Skurlick. Yep. And an easy peel. Might be biding her time. Wasting rocks, perhaps. And it was a single for Michelle Yagi in the eight to nod it up at four over there. Robin Silvernagel and Michelle Yagi of Bern, Switzerland will be heading to an extra end. That game, of course, also available through Curling Zone. And that final rock from Gerilyn Ramsey. Going to bounce just a little bit and it's probably take out a bowl. For the skip from Hokkaido. Should be handshakes if she can get this one to go. And that will be the game. It's Satsuki Fujisawa. Wrapping it up is. a seven to four victory over Calgary's Kayla Skurlick in the opening draw of the Nutrient Egg Solutions Western Showdown here in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Yes, it will be X's on the board as a final score. Just a reminder to everybody watching at home, you can watch every other draw on Curling Zone's YouTube page. Just go to that Curling Zone YouTube page, take your pick. Which which exciting, thrilling finish do you want to watch? I want to uh I want to thank you for joining me. This was a, a fantastic game. Any more? nutrient and a large portion of what our job is is to get fertilizer out with the carriers so they can get directed to the farms or to the different retail locations. We know that if we don't have the answer to something we're not afraid to reach out because we have support from everyone. We've got a really good team behind us. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference.
Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next curling stadium.